Hello, and welcome back to Parlay. This prompt was written by Piss the Whip. Hope you'll enjoy listening. It's about uh, clothing builds, specifically uh, jeans.com's fit guide uh, to jean cuts. Piss the Whip says, new alignment chart dropped for a last minute January parlay. Discuss the moral, socioeconomic, and ecological implications of each combination. Naturally, Captain has a moral imperative to identify his own alignments or range of alignments. Uh, very well. Uh, this is a parlay that will be very easy because you've laid out a three-act structure for me. Uh, the moral, socioeconomic, and ecological implications of uh, different fits of genes. And so, in some detail, uh, we'll begin to go into those. Now, of course, before we start, it's good to analyze the field a little bit. Uh, the meta, <laughs> if you will, for uh, for gene cuts is uh, it's you know it's out there. We're we're <laughs> we out here. Um, so let's go through them a little bit. I'm actually literally just going to read some of the leg style options at the top. I feel like the rise options are fairly self-explanatory, so I'm not going to read them, but I am going to talk about them a little bit. There's a few points I want to highlight. So that means if you're not uh, in on the gene cut metagame, uh, oh, you will be. You will be. Whether you like it or not, get out now if you'd prefer not to be. Skinny cut jeans. It says snug in the seat, thigh, and leg. The seat, ah yes, the ass, if you will. Um, very nice gene terminology. <laughs> very based, uh, tier list. Very nice. Um, skinny. Snug in the seat, thigh, and leg. I think that skinny jeans, as a cut of, of jean, <laughs> are, of, a cut of jeans, are, um, maybe the name is, is hard sometimes, because they often, um, it doesn't mean that the, the size of jeans with a skinny cut, like, will look skinny on the person. You know, there is an effect where because the leg, as you can see in the diagram, is uh, kind of narrowing, and human legs often narrow, it will track with your legs and it creates a sort of drawdown, uh, I guess sort of part of an hourglass shape on your figure. You know, so for example, I have modestly wide hips for a guy and pretty slim legs, like lower legs. Uh, and so if I wear skinny jeans, it gives me what you might call a stereotypically more feminine appearance, combined with the fact that when I was quite young, I had this strange, uh, like, motor weirdness, where I had difficulty learning basic things like um, jumping jacks and skipping. Now, as an adult, I've investigated this a little bit more, and it seems like I was having difficulty with, uh, like, bilateral coordination. So for example, like patting your head and rubbing your stomach. Now what's odd is that I am now unusually good at those things. That's very strange, but maybe part of the reason is that I went to some physical therapy when I was quite young. I don't really remember, but probably like five, um, where they quite literally just like helped me practice skipping and stuff. Uh, and it, uh, I guess helped a lot, or something happened, and I'm now unusually good at those things where I started out being unusually awful at those things. I had really bad balance too, now I have unusually good balance. Very strange. Um, anyway, as a result, I walk uh, atypical for a lot of men, I think because of the structure of, of our pelvises, um, where I kind of sway each foot in front of the other a little bit. Uh, I, a lot of women walk this way, probably because it's more comfortable for them, I guess. Um, and, and it must be something about my physical body or most people's physical bodies that encourages them to walk this way. But for whatever reason, I tend to just walk like that now. Like, that's how I walk. I walk in, with a noticeable kind of half-moon turn to my feet, um, almost like I'm walking on like a balance beam or something uh, all the time, a little bit. It's not extremely pronounced, but if you look at a lot of people walking next to me, you'll notice. All of those things combined mean that if I wear skinny cut jeans, but they're they're not like super skinny fitted, 
and I just walk normally and I'm not wearing like boots or anything, my silhouette appears much more feminine than a lot of uh, like, I, I don't know, people presenting as male, if I am doing that, uh, the, you know, normally look. So skinny jeans, I think, are a really interesting case where it can have a combinatory effect with other aspects of your appearance that I think is why I've gotten a lot of positive comments about how they look on me, but a lot of people, th like, it looks strangely girly in a way that they didn't intend somehow on a lot of people. Like, people will accidentally get skinny jeans. I had a friend who accidentally bought a pair of skinny jeans. And it did look odd on him, but I wasn't able to pinpoint why for a while, and I think it might be because of this. I think that a key thing in fashion and, like, uh, kind of build crafting your appearance a little bit is to figure out what the piece does in aggregate. A lot of pieces don't do anything specific on their own. You have to combine them with other things to read as a whole appearance. In particular... We will later come back to how skinny jeans allow you to make a certain kind of line at the bottom of your figure uh, that you'll notice the other cuts do not. They either go straight or they go out. The skinny jean cut goes in, at least of the cuts we're being shown here. Okay, straight, uh, not much to say, let's move on. Boot cut, interesting one. I think that you can handle having boots or like a chonk at the end of your leg uh, on your feet, as it were, where, which is where your feet are at the end of your leg, um, in different ways. Now, these say slightly flared to fit over boots. Flared here, meaning that they, they kind of come out at the bottom. They're a little wider at the bottom. Uh, the idea being you can slide them over boots. But what you'll notice is that that solution will create a curve that, that wouldn't otherwise have been there. Your hips and then they'll kind of narrow with your legs, but then go out a little bit again at your feet. This may or may not be desirable. Uh, I spent a lot of time talking about gender at the beginning because I couldn't figure out how else to talk about that section, but I don't think it's particularly useful to focus on like for who these cuts are for. And I would encourage you, especially if you have grown up around a lot of guys, to not think about which cuts are for who. Uh, I think that that will help you very much, and hopefully that will be useful throughout this parlay. Um, whether they look good for various people has everything to do with what other effects your appearance will have, and essentially nothing to do with like your gender identity or whatever, um, in my opinion. I think it's very useful to just not worry about that when you pick these things. Hopefully that's a, a positive suggestion, a gentle suggestion. You live your life however you want. Uh, and so my point with these is that I think for some people, maybe this is a good fit. My experience, maybe it's just my taste, has been that for a lot of people, I think it looks better if they take a different approach to handling boots over their clothes. For example, skinny jeans and put the jeans under the boots, like would just be an obvious, simple example. Or you could do trouser leggings. Uh, it's more of a sort of block <laughs> around um, your entire leg. There is no curve with uh, like with the bootcut jeans. You see what I mean? Flare jeans, it says narrower at knee with flared leg opening. Basically, they're just making that curve much more pronounced. And there's a much more noticeable effect of going out at the bottom of your silhouette. These are something that uh, come to mind a lot for my appearance because I have rather broad shoulders, but I'm otherwise quite lean. So I have this interesting combination of traits where I can look like a bit of a twig <laughs> with my limbs, but my, my chassis, my body, um, is rather stereotypically broad. It will fit a lot of American men's clothing, but the rest of my body won't. And so what do you do to adapt to that? You could look at that situation and say, well, having them flare at the bottom is going to look good because it kind of matches the like breadth of the top of my appearance, right? But it doesn't end up looking that good, in my opinion, because uh, it makes my feet look isolated. It makes it look like there, there's just this. <laughs> you're extending the look of, of leanness and twigginess of my legs where the flare cut jeans narrow. And then at the end, it's like I have really large feet. But the problem is I have really small feet for my height. <laughs> um, I have small hands and feet for compared to my long limbs and uh, like large bone structure. 
I say these things not because you would really care, but because I it sounded to me like this is what Pistol Whip wants me to talk about a little. I was only half joking, but half joking about doing the moral, socioeconomic, and ecological thing. We're going to do that for half the parlay. And finally, because I think that this would be helpful if you want to make like more fun fashion choices. Again, I'm especially talking to people who haven't had those presented to them that much, which was definitely my experience as I grew up. I just wasn't I didn't feel like I had options, and that was not fun for me. I felt like I had to look bad because there were no options available to make my appearance look fun. And that's partly because I was. it was assumed that because I am uh, presenting as male, I therefore don't like wouldn't be interested in those options, which kind of tricked me into thinking that I wasn't interested in those options, which is completely the opposite of what is actually true. If you think about making builds for one second, and then think about fashion as a subject, like actual fashion, like picking clothes that feel like synergistic with your appearance, it sounds like something I would be all about, and yet I didn't really experience any of it until I was just on my own after all of my schooling, where every single person who ever met me experienced me as like having potato clothing, but like he's so nice like if only i could have looked like not complete garbage during that time that would have been nice you know um i would have had a lot of fun with that but i didn't and i hope that that is not the fate other people meet okay trouser uh here it's basically saying they're straight but they're they're like wider <laughs> essentially it says fuller leg from hip down wider hem uh yeah, it makes sense. Um, the idea is that these are quite straight, and it's these straight and especially trouser jeans that can kind of, and not really fix, but like balance that thing about my appearance where my legs can be quite twiggy. And yet a lot of the clothing that looks good on me is, um, it's that outdoorsy guy. This is like the end of my shaving cycle, so you can see, you know the aesthetic I'm talking about. Like you got the, you got the big jacket, with the hoodie in the back. I always do that thing where I layer two jackets with each other. Um, that's just what's comfortable for me. And if I get hot, I can unzip them and take both layers off at once. Uh, and these are outdoorsy clothes, you know? Um, it matches the way I've settled on my appearance uh, and my facial hair, which grows too damn fast. So that's not really my choice, but that's the cadence that I've found myself in. I could just shave all the time, I guess. Um, but I shave every two days already, so. Uh, and so I think often to match the kind of somewhat bulky jacket that will look good on me, trouser or straight cut jeans with boots look relatively more rounded. They kind of finish out that flow to my appearance by carrying my relatively wider hips. That width get carries, gets carried down the rest of my figure rather than narrowing if I wear skinny jeans. Though I kind of like that appearance, like the sort of combination of uh, uh, slightly more, again, I said stereotypically feminine, just for lack of any better way to describe it, um, more narrowed leg appearance uh, on the bottom half of my body, skinny jeans, but then pretty bulky, uh, you know, shoulder structure emphasizing jackets uh, is what I wear most of the time. And I've been well liked in my physical and romantic life, and so I suppose that went well. <laughs> I Well, we can't know how it would have went if I'd worn uh, flare-cut jeans the whole time, but... Um, so that's your answer to the question that you're asking. Uh, which of these leg-style options do I prefer? The answer is skinny and trouser, but it's not so much that I prefer them as much as that they are the synergistic options with my appearance. And boot cut is the one that I would most avoid. That's kind of a trap, in my opinion, for my appearance. Uh, it seems like it would make sense, but largely because I have tiny feet, uh, it just doesn't work. Um, it will not successfully balance like the bulkiness of the top part of my body. That was interesting. Uh, rise options. How about that? There's not too much to say about these. Um, I think that one problem with this part of the chart is that depending on the, the curvature and structure of like your core, it might just not look that good to have literally anything other than regular rise here. At least that's been my experience. Um, so I haven't done essentially anything here. And if you have been shopping in parts of of the the clothing market that are labeled for men's fashion 
you may have largely missed this entire category as well. I admit I have essentially kind of skipped this category for me, but I'm a person where a lot of my close relationships involve like my partner and I shopping for clothing together for both of us, because it's a lot easier to have that perspective with somebody else around you. Um, and so I have thought about this a lot. Um, I think there's interesting things to do with um, I used to really hate the appearance of high-rise clothing of basically any kind, um, and I have a my current partner has really turned me onto that a little bit, uh, literally, but also like figuratively, it has objective aesthetic merit, and I was just being st stubborn. <laughs> uh, I didn't want to admit that. I don't know. I don't know why I wasn't into that before. Um, so yeah, I mean, there's stuff to say, but with limited time in this parlay, I would say if I were to focus on this, it would be the worst part of the parlay. So I'm going to move on, but just to say that I personally think there's a lot of interesting things you can do with um, like the rise of not just jeans, but like clothing in general. I think it's a good one to do nothing with if you are not sure what to do, though. Like, I, I think it's less easy to do something that will benefit you, <laughs> and it's very easy to set and forget, you know what I mean? Like, to just do nothing. Um, so in the world of making build decisions, sometimes eliminating variables and focusing on things you feel like will have a big impact, the leg style is basically what I'm referring to here, um, not the worst idea, in my humble opinion. Okay, uh, the quote, moral, socioeconomic, and ecological implications of each combination or of different styles of gene. Uh, I'll take this in a, in a slightly open-ended direction. The moral implications. Well, as we've discussed and alluded to a few times in the parlay already, one of the interesting aspects of like the fit of clothing, at least in my and I'm sure plenty of people's cultures and upbringings is that there is a default setting and therefore making a decision that isn't the default setting automatically says something about you at the very least it says that you chose this you know you're it's like you're saying i think this looks good a few things can happen here often the thing that happens is that other people look at that thing on you and say well i don't think that looks good and you are saying you do think this looks good, therefore I think you are an idiot, <laughs> um, which I think is not very nice. I think a lot of the time people actually do not think that it does not look good. They are not thinking about whether they think it looks good. They have a bias against that aesthetic, rather than thinking about the sort of synergy it has with the rest of the appearance. You will often hear people do something along the lines of, or you often won't get to experience both halves, but they'll say something like, well, I wouldn't expect that you know, I'm not going to recommend like skinny jeans, um, maybe for my appearance, but then if I wear them, people will see the aesthetic value in taking that approach to my appearance. If they, you know, unless they're just being disingenuous, of course. <laughs> um, and so I've experienced this a lot of times where people have a tendency to say like, well, I wouldn't look good in that. But then when they wear it, they make a complete 180 because they very clearly do look good in that. If you break down what would make someone look good in that, they have that quality. <laughs> so provided they want to look good in that and they just don't think they would look good in that, you can get rid of that bias. That's been my most common experience. Um, I have had some uh, people close to me in my life who didn't have, I think, good very self-esteem, uh, very good self-esteem about like what types of things would look good on them. But if you if you break down why it might look good on them, I mean, it checks out. And then sure enough, when they try it, they think this looks unexpectedly good. And I think to myself, that does not look unexpectedly good. That it's very obvious that that's going to look good because you have X, Y and Z qualities. And there you go. Um, but of course, uh, while um, interpreting this as a moral component of fashion is a little tricky, it also matters how the person feels in the clothing they're wearing. Uh, for example, I do sometimes feel more self-conscious when I wear baggier clothes, even though I think they have plenty of synergy with my appearance. Like the, it's not that the, like I think they objectively look bad. It's because they remind me of myself 15 years ago when I didn't feel like I had as many choices and my clothing was, uh, it's not because of the cut really, it's because it didn't fit me right because I didn't feel like I was being, I really wasn't being given options, but I could have found them if I had known to look for them. Um, and I did not enjoy that time of my life. And so it's hard for me to feel comfortable in those things. For example, I used to wear cargo pants a lot 
like 15 years ago. Uh, and I don't think that that was a good fit for me at the time. I think there are versions of that aesthetic that I could work well with now. For example, a type of clothing that I wear a lot in my personal life, um, because I work from home, a lot of the clothing that I that I own now is adapted for, I'm fully dressed, but I don't necessarily want to go out in New England like half of the year because it's cold wearing this clothing. You know, it's meant to be comfortable when I'm inside, but fully dressed. A lot of people don't have much of a need for this kind of clothing, but I do. This is the thing I most often wear. And so a lot of what I wear are, um, I don't know the name for this, which would help you find it if you were interested, but um, they're, they're pants that they'll often have a drawstring. They're almost like sweatpants, but they're thin and airy, and they come to like a, like a bungee around your waist and at the end of each of your legs. So they kind of puff out at your legs a little bit, but then come uh, closed around your legs. So they don't have much contact with your skin. They're quite airy around your legs, but they are warm if it's cold. Like you can keep heat from your body inside. Um, they keep the skin away from the sun. I believe they were originally designed for like wear in desert climates where you want to keep the sun from touching your skin, which means you want to cover up, but you don't want to be actually hot because it's hot and therefore you don't want to be covered up and so <laughs> they're sort of like a sun shield <laughs> around your clothing but i find them very comfortable for like my climate controlled environment uh, and i actually really enjoy them when it's cold too personally i'm hairy and i run hot so i would prefer something that actually doesn't give me much warmth too um so i wear those a lot and where i was going with that was <laughs> that for me that's kind of an adaptation to like they're fulfilling many of the same roles as cargo pants but i don't associate those as being like this thing from an earlier part of my life i associate them as being my relative success as a sole proprietor of a business which makes me feel really confident when i wear those clothes and i think they look like good not particularly here or there with my appearance but i look good in them because i like them like i feel good wearing them um i act confident when i wear them because this is like my life's work not these random pants but i feel like i'm you know living my best life or whatever um, and i think that makes a significant difference to the way i behave i had a long time friend who only ever gave me a compliment on my appearance when I wore these. Uh, she is not a super forward-speaking person. She wouldn't normally just comment on people's appearances. I'm not surprised or insulted she didn't comment elsewise, but I think she commented on these because she noticed it was literally different. I said, you know, what's so good about them? And she said, it's just, there's, it's like there's something different. I don't know, like you're, you, you, you really like those is what she ended up saying. And I thought that was an interesting comment to receive. I feel like that plays to how I feel. Um, I'm not sure there's anything all that amazing. You know, if they kind of balloon out at your legs, it's sort of like going for trouser cut jeans, but then they, it doesn't go to that width all the way through your feet, which kind of has an indoorsy feel, you know, like you just have socks on. Um, that, yeah, that's fine. Um, so it kind of helps balance my top heavy, if you want to think of it that way, figure while being comfortable for indoors or feeling indoorsy and informal. Sure. Um, yeah, like it's not like a terrible fit for me. No, uh, but I don't think that's why it like appears to fit with my appearance. I don't know if that made sense at all. And that's not really about jeans, but I mean, let's move on to the socioeconomic impact. Uh, I think that there's kind of three tiers to discuss here, something that has sort of bothered me for a while. Uh, it's expensive to have put together clothes kind of custom built for you. Just like I would often talk about with builds in general, it's difficult to have the time, the resources, in this case, the money, usually, to have something that is put together. Not having a build you enjoy doesn't make you a less creative person or someone less interested in making things for yourself. It usually just means you don't have the time to spend on those things. I have a couple of close friends who are both playing through a game that I'm playing through, and I'm building the heck out of it because of, of who are you even talking to? <laughs> this is my life. And they 
have really interesting ideas for builds that are not that well fleshed out, not because they don't have a good idea, but because they have not taken the time to do that. One of them because he is busy, and the other one because she has made a value calculation that she would rather, she'd be having more fun if she focused on other parts of the game. It doesn't have to do with whether they have a good idea for those things. Like, just like the moral section where I was talking about how I think we have a tendency to judge people who are wearing something other than the kind of basic thing, I almost feel like it's the opposite. It's like, I actually admire those people. The decision you made, in my humble opinion, is often not actually that good, but the thing is you, you're you demonstrating that you wanted to make a decision. I got a lot of respect for that, personally. Just because you haven't like invented the Tesla coil in your free time doesn't mean that you're not playing around and making some sparks. It's fun. Like, that's fun. It doesn't have to be a masterpiece. <laughs> and I think that's one of the hard things about fashion, is that you are expressing yourself a little bit, and it's usually going to be a work in progress. People aren't going to spend most of their lives seeing the complete version of your life, let alone your appearance. And therefore, it feels like you're showing people the ugly first draft of your novel and saying it's the finished product, or you don't get to say that it isn't the finished product, which doesn't always feel good. The temptation is that you can get something put together much more cheaply by well, not necessarily on purpose, but conforming. <laughs> there is a default fashion available that you may have much cheaper, and it will probably look reasonably good because that's what popular and readily available things are, well-optimized compromises. So if you want to look good for a formal event, you could wear whatever's in your closet, you could spend a medium amount of money and wear the, the standard suit and tie or whatever that will look extraordinarily boring on most people, but it will look fine, because it's designed to look fine on any arbitrary person. Or you could spend a ludicrous amount of money and time and have something that looks insanely good on you specifically. But that one is so expensive in terms of time and effort for most people that you'll never get there. Your life will end and you will have not gotten a chance to do that, uh, unless you build your entire life around doing such a thing. Yeah, that's a story for another time. <laughs> Uh, and I really like those. I mean, my life's goal seems to be to get to that like high effort, ludicrous effort option for every single part of my life without it taking an unrealistic amount of time to have a life and yet get to get to that point with each activity in my life at the same time as having relative balance, which is like sort of impossible. And part of how I'm trying to do it is by having it be literally my job. It's kind of working. Uh, I'm I'm a genius <laughs> question mark um, but I mean it, it's very difficult I, I would never judge someone for not having that be complete usually when I see people wearing something weird I think how awesome that they're attempting to do the thing and failing like basically all of us are <laughs> uh, that's like not worthy of ridicule or note it's fine you know uh, go figure I don't really feel like this is a socioeconomic level point, but I have difficulty finding a place to put this part of the parlay, and I want to put it in the parlay. Um, I have gotten a lot of burns, sick burns indeed, but burns nonetheless, from chat about the color green. Um, I think it looks very good on me. I have green, amberish looking eyes. I have an appearance that makes me look like I look like a tree. Have you seen? Are you looking at this man? I look like a, a birch tree. <laughs> uh, green is a good fit. It has synergy with my appearance. Uh, I think people think green, uh, what I was told, what most of you said, let's give the feedback fairly, is that green is the most boring color. Green is the objectively most boring color, is what I remember people saying. I, it's not, like what, or, or I mean, I don't completely disagree, but like why, <laughs> what, where, where did that come from? Um, something that I think is interesting about uh, wearing green and jeans is that it's kind of a tricky color combination. Uh, one of the things about wearing jeans that is interesting is that if they're often blue, that kind of manipulates what other colors are around them, you know? My own logo has an orange X 
largely originally because it is a complementary color to blue, <laughs> which is the color of jeans, which is how I can get you to notice that it's a pair of pants, like from a distance, you know? Um, and not because I like want my X to be neon orange or orange looks good on me at all. It doesn't, <laughs> in my opinion, anyway. Uh, mustard isn't a bad color, but that's not orange at all. Uh, it looks okay with jeans, but not great in my opinion. Most of the time, anyway. Um, you can get a lot of shades of, of jean. Um, a thing that I do to kind of fiddle with this and get the aesthetic of jeans but not have to worry about, like, it's just blue, it's going to be blue, um, is to get incredibly faded but still just barely blue jeans and then wear them with, like, a jean jacket that is just, like, dark blue. It, it's colored like jeans. It looks like jeans. And they're acid-washed. So the parts of the jean jacket that are acid-washed like weirdly match the color of the really faded jeans and make it look cohesive and yet it doesn't look like I'm just wearing jeans and then jeans entirely. It coheres without looking like it's all just the same thing. What I'm trying to say is green actually is a really bad color for this in my opinion. I think it's difficult to wear green and blue together and have it feel good. I'm not entirely sure why um, from my perspective anyway. Uh, there's a sort of perspective angle where because I like, this is so ridiculous, but this is why I feel this way, Simic in Magic the Gathering, which is the combination of the colors green and blue in the magic five color, you know, color scheme, uh, looking at the back of a magic card, green and blue, um, that combination, knowledge and evolution combining together ideologically. Uh, a, a guild in one of Magic's worlds called the Simic Combine. Um, because I have been an enjoyer of Simic, uh, yes, Magic players, I know, I'm a filthy casual for enjoying Simic. Believe me, I know. <laughs> I am. Uh, I really like wearing green and blue together, even though it looks bad to me, <laughs> because when I see it, I remember Simic from Magic the Gathering, which is ridiculous, but I swear to you, this is how people like a thing in fashion, and then other people look at it and go, why are you doing that? <laughs> like, It's not because they're stuck with that, or they have like a weird opinion about what's aesthetically cool, it's because they have a weirdly developed mental blind spot from playing Magic the Gathering. Finally, moving on to the ecological impact of wearing jeans. And this is where I get even more upset with Twitch chat for saying that green is the worst color. Why you can't wear trees? Why you not wearing trees? There's an interesting situation here where if you walk in the woods and you wear green, brown, black, and like a splash color, like red or something, like a, like a, a burgundy, uh, you look like the woods you still stick out because you have like a human kind of looking color, like burgundy or something, but you otherwise look like a tree or like a forest. Um, is this good? You know, <laughs> the ecological impact of, of wearing jeans and fashion choices, in my opinion, is that you can wear certain colors and it is advantageous in various ways when walking in the woods. Bugs or insects will bother you less if you are wearing certain colors. Generally, the advice I've heard is to wear lighter colors. Uh, so those very washed out jeans I mentioned before. Um, using a color that is easy to notice for other hikers or perhaps bikers definitely gives you an edge of safety as well. I've been interested in a while for doing something like putting a glow-in-the-dark paint on my clothes to walk in the woods so that when it is nighttime, like toward the end of a walk, toward the end of the day, the clothing glows a little bit and I'm a little safer because I'm easier to see, and it just like gives me a gentle reminder that you should probably get going. It's not entirely safe to go for a completely random, um, you know, escapade into the woods when it's dark out. <laughs> it's not the most responsible thing to do always. As fun as it can be. <laughs> uh, so I don't know. I mean, that's the main thing that comes to mind. Ecological uh, might seem like the outlier here, but personally, I think that uh, another way that it fits into fashion and choosing jeans is not having that many clothes. I was really interested in an earlier stage of my life in the concept of a, you might hear it called a capsule wardrobe. The idea is that you have a lot of modular pieces of clothing that kind of fit together. I think that this is oftentimes more trouble than it's worth for a lot of people. One of the problems is that I think that it kind of mucks up the socioeconomic part of the equation a little, where you have to find ludicrously specific articles of clothing for it to work well. 
otherwise you have an appearance you like less that has less utility and doesn't particularly contain a small amount of pieces of clothing. Like you can't really get started until you've done so much work that you probably just have a decent amount of clothing now. And then what, where you're just going to not wear it, even though you like it, you know, um, the pathway to getting to a capsule wardrobe feels kind of unsustainable for no reason. Like it's something you would do. It feels like a very YouTube vlogger thing. You know, you do it because you want to look very put together on the internet when the audience doesn't see that you actually like threw out a bunch of perfectly good clothes so you would look put together on the internet, which is like, that's bad. There is no good part of that. That's bad. <laughs> um, and it's not attainable for the audience. Like they can't actually do that. Everybody will ooh and ah, but if you break down how you would get there, there like really isn't a progression path toward getting there. That's my humble opinion anyway. Or it would take so much management to get to that point that you might as well just not bother. Like, put that management into having clothes you like to wear and enjoying the things that you have, and you'll be better off for less resources. Like, it, there aren't, aren't really enough benefits to doing that. That being said, having modular pieces of clothing, good, in my opinion. Um, you know, there's a topic in the ecological tier of this discussion about washing your clothes, like, enough but not too much. I do laundry what I'm told is more often than a lot of people, uh, about every week, basically. Uh, but I have a somewhat smaller wardrobe than some people do. And I also don't wash all the clothes that I own the same amount. You know, I wash shirts a little more often than I wash pants because they get more dirty. Like, I, I still wash everything once a week, but I won't usually wear a shirt for longer than, like, most of a day before washing it. Whereas with pants, or, like, especially those loose-fitting pants that are barely even touching my skin, I'll wear those for, like, two middle of the days in a row. I don't think that's gross or unsanitary. I'm an incredibly over-focused person on making sure everything is clean and doesn't smell or whatever. Uh, I think it just makes sense. It's more efficient. And thus, I've often organized my outfits and the clothing that I own over time so that they match with that amount of uses. So for example, those looser fitting pants I mentioned, I have a set of shirts and socks, and I just wear whatever boxers with this, that are meant to be like modular little additions to those pants. I'll have a few days in a row where I wear the pants. One day I wear this set of shirt and socks that match and complement the color of the pants. Then I wash those and move on to the next set of shirt and socks that match the pants. And then I wash everything, kind of like that. So, I mean, I have more shirts than I have pants and stuff because I use more shirts than I have pants and stuff. Uh, that is a, I think, reasonable way to calibrate your wardrobe a little bit and have it be that you can be enjoying wearing things that you like for longer while still wearing things an amount that is very sanitary <laughs> to wear them uh, and not washing things like a ridiculous amount like too much um, to get two pairs of the the soft fitting pants or whatever would be to wash them more than they need to be washed would be to wear them out quicker than they need they really deserve to be worn out and the shirts too like it's the same outfit because the shirts are literally the exact same shirt but like from the same brand at the same size but just in two different colors but significantly different colors but different colors uh such and the socks are the same sock but in different colors the outfit is the exact same feeling to wear except for the color difference but things get cleaned and washed like the right amount the a sustainable amount but also they're you know fresh and clean all of the time uh, I think this is the more practical version of a built or capsule type of wardrobe. Um, I think that's the, the more attainable one that could be a lot of fun. If you have articles of clothing that you like, or like a pair of jeans or something, maybe this would be something you would enjoy. You could try, you know, rather than feeling like you need to get a whole new outfit, try to get the pieces that you need to replace right now, get another version of those, or uh, literally another copy of those even, without feeling like you need to copy literally everything. You do not need to duplicate every article of clothing in the outfit. Uh, you don't need a second jacket, for example. Like, the, the one you wore yesterday is probably fine. <laughs> uh, it depends on your work situation, you know. I think a final element here that really isn't related to this parlay, but it, it came up, if I were to talk about this more, 
is the idea that because I stream, there's something to be said for having more clothing variety than I otherwise would. Now, I've been thinking about that a lot recently. I think that having like piratey clothing, for example, that would be beneficial for, I would gain some nebulous benefit for work. Um, I would make some unknown amount of money, if you want to word it that way. Gross, I know, but that's how it is. Um, I like those clothes, so that's efficient in that way. Uh, I feel, I don't know, like comfortable with myself or whatever wearing those clothes. And I generally fiddle with my appearance during the workday anyway. That is changing, like for the stream, that's not an additional thing. I, I largely already do that. If I'm wearing the uh, the poofy pants that I described before, I nearly always change into gym shorts to stream because I get physically hotter during streams. I Okay, uh, warmer um, during streams. It is strenuous to talk and be engaged with the audience for like about three hours straight. That takes a lot of energy. I'm heating up significantly now. It feels the same to my body as if I was working out. So I wear clothes I would wear to exercise in. But I could probably figure it out for the thing I was wearing as a shirt. And you don't see any other part of me during the stream. So... Maybe that could be a very weird, if you were to see it all together, but interesting place to take one's appearance. I change uh, my clothes, like, a lot throughout the day. Usually not my whole outfit. You know, I'll take off these and put on gym shorts or change shirts uh, from a shirt I was, like, wearing in the morning to a shirt that I want to show you on camera or whatever, you know, uh, and, and such. So that is something that's been on my mind, but that is well and truly not that much about jeans. I think we can agree. Hope you enjoyed yourself. I thought this was a lot of fun. Um, I tried to go into a lot of detail about whatever you wanted to hear from asking this parlay. Did I do it good? <laughs> Let me know. <laughs> Thanks for asking.